portfolio site, it's this one. Okay, that's where we are. So we're not looking at the freelance ones now. We're looking at this one for this for the portfolio. So it's that one. Just open it again so you can see it. It says updated 24. So if you've already started on the previous version, just copy across if you've done anything. So I did talk about it last week. I just remind you to fill it in as you go. Because this is your planning. So you're meant to have done the planning by now. So researching traditional presentation methodologies. So that's looking at print portfolios, which are the more traditional forms. And then trying to find some innovative ideas there. Okay, and put the URL and a screenshot of the example. We've got three examples there. And then a little bit of a explain to yourself why you think each is appropriate for the graphic design industry, what are the ideas you like, are there any things in what you're seeing there that you want to apply to your own design. So you've all done this. I'm seeing it all on your screens. You've looked at things. You've looked at the innovative recent ones. Screenshot them and put the URL for that particular one in there. Then it goes on to look at trends. Look at interesting things that are design trends, look at layout trends, typography, interactivity. So that means looking at some websites as well to see are they, you know, are you seeing websites with little animations? Are you seeing websites where the navigation is not on the traditional side? What are you seeing a lot of and what can you identify? Lots of websites out there that talk about trends, you know, right now. What are people doing? Um, don't worry about the accessibility one because we will actually be covering that in, um, in the web design one. Let's have a look at the web accessibility. Planning the presentation, we talked about purpose and audience. Who do you think you're going to be showing it to? Do uh, you think you're going to be showing it to brand managers? Do you think you'll be showing it to uh, you know, the director of a publications company? Um, a social media marketing company? Who do you think you're going to put it in front of? What's your purpose for the print? Do you think you're just going to take it to interviews? Um, are you going to use it when you're talking to freelance clients, for example? The web, what are you planning to do with it? Probably you're going to have the link on your website, on your social media accounts, all sorts of places. Probably you want to be able to email that web link to um, you know, potential employers. Same with the social media. Where do you want to set up a social media presence? I would strongly advise, I know people say it's sort of like not used that much, but it's not true, LinkedIn. It's still a place where you get a lot of recruiters looking for you. So let them find you, and that's where you could also put a link to your website. Um, you may decide you want to have a sister site on Instagram with a lot of the stuff that you're preparing for the website going on there. Okay, list where you think you're going to have a social media presence. Okay, some, some people who are illustrators, they want to go and put their, their stuff on a particular couple of websites where they know that's where people showcase their website work. Do you want to have a Behance portfolio site as well? So you've got to think about it and list them. Um, what are the requirements and delivery methods? So we already know that. We know we need high quality print um, files, so we need 300 ppi for print. We know we need social media and website imagery to be screen resolution. Um, are there any other things you need to think about for the delivery? So things like the platform that you're choosing to do your website in. Are you choosing it because you think you'll learn more doing it or do you think you just want to you know, do a quick and dirty mix one because that's all you can cope with, you know? Everybody's got different um, requirements there. Um, but also the requirements, you know, the navigation, you know, it's got to be easy, it's got to be not too complicated or people won't work. Um, so some of the limitations of the technology and the presentation methods. So we know with print, for example, you can't get as many projects in there, can you? All right? Um, Behance, for example, the profile on there probably doesn't let you put as much as you can put on your own website. So list some of the limitations that you think some, some of the things, like one of the limitations with Instagram, for example, is that Meta owns it, okay? That's, that's gonna limit maybe some of the stuff you put up if you're 
really feel a bit precious about maybe your, your own artwork going up there. Just understanding that on you know, Facebook and, and Instagram stuff, they actually can do anything with those images. So that's a limitation, isn't it? You know, if you want to keep your work. You want some presence on Instagram, but not everything. You know, um, making sure you can disable downloads on your website. That's a good you know, thing to think about. It's a limitation. Um, Explicit messages, we talked a lot about that. What do you, what do you want to make sure they see? I want to make sure they see lots of, lots of publication work or I want to make sure they see lots of branding work. That's because I'm thinking about a job in that area. That's very much explicit. Um, how are you presenting your creative work? Okay, so it's a bit vague, that question, actually, isn't it? Um, I just think that's too vague. At least define the intended audience. Um, well, you just list, okay? Website, do, listing is a bit repetitive. You're gonna do a website, you're gonna do a print document, anything else, just put the list down. But it does repeat up here a bit, so I don't want to repeat it. Who's the intended audience? Who do you think you're putting in front of? What kind of design agencies? Would it be marketing and media people as well? What kind of jobs do you think you'd go for? And how effective do you think they'll be? So that's just your opinion. What's the most effective? How many people do you think each of these platforms will reach? Um, implicit, we've talked a lot about that. So what's the, the kind of invisible communication you want to get across to them? That you're, um, you know, that you have a minimalist design style, that um, you're really great at interactivity on your websites. What is it that you want them to understand about you? that you um, are really good at colour, you know, that you've got a refined style or that you've got a really kind of colourful style, um, you know. Uh, that's where those keywords should be really here. So if you tell me it's meant to be minimal and quiet, that's an implicit message. It's going to be conveyed through the typography. If you tell me dynamic and, you know, um, active and um, high contrast, that's going to tell us, you know, that's your design style, that's a much more active kind of design and it should help you stay on track when you're choosing right now and exploring labels. So that implicit message stuff, that's your keywords. The keywords, what's the invisible communication? I am a messy, chaotic designer. No, I'm a really tight, structured designer. But oops, it's got a bit too boring here, you know. So what is it that you want to, want to convey? Um, create two or more mood boards. I think everybody's kind of already done that, so you just put them in there. Um, two mood boards that you've been collecting, um, examples, and hopefully you're starting to see some colour trends emerging from your collections of examples of typography, imagery, layouts, etc. Um, consult, you did that today, so whatever feedback I gave you, whatever we discussed, Write it up now before you forget. You, know, you don't have to come back to this in, you know, uh, the end of the term, the end of semester, and suddenly fill this out. You won't remember, okay? You won't. So fill it in now. I talk to you. You can also turn to the person next to you and ask what they think about the three different designs and, you know, show them your branding design, your self-branding, and see whether they think one or the other is kind of working better. Um, copyright and IP, um, you've already learned a little bit about that. Um, what kind of copyright statement are you going to put on your web and portfolio? Try and work out the wording. So we've discussed that before, but just to remind you, it's something along the lines of, um, you know, all the work in this portfolio is mine unless otherwise stated. And then explain what you're going to do to credit the images. So are you going to have credit under each image that's Crediting it, or are you going to say all imagery not my own is sourced from Unsplash because it all came from there? Um, what are you going to do? So it just depends on the job, but like with your publication design, you want to create a style for your credits or have a place in the portfolio. If it's not on every page, then you know, preferably do it like a magazine. And if you know, you can say mock up sourced from wherever, mock up tree or something, and, you know, or you might have a list at the back, you know, make a plan for where it's going to go. The legal requirements you've got to list is obviously um, 
the copyright information needs to be shown. You have to display it. It's not your own work. This is your portfolio and people are going to assume it's all your work unless you state otherwise. So then you must state otherwise. So that means if you, putting, you want to put some illustrations in, credit, if you've traced them off a photo, you want to credit it, okay? You must do some crediting, even with illustrations. Photography, obviously. Mock-ups, obviously. Now we have a lot on the tape ones we can give you. And I'll just remind you where those are as well. But part of what you'll be doing over the holidays is collecting and maybe buying some really high quality mock-ups because you're going to need them. But then keep track of the copyright for each of them. Um, but you do need to figure out the, the, the type because it's got a, that statement's got to appear on the print portfolio as well. Then you come down to the production plan. So this is what you start doing right today. You know, what are my tasks? And then what are my actions? When am I doing it? So you can start with today. So today was uh, draft ideas. Oh, it's not typing for some reason. Yeah, but anyway, type in there. Okay, my, my that got white in there. Oh yeah, look, it's got white text in there. Okay, another thing I'll have to fix on. Draft ideas. Um, actions, produce three sketches on paper, then um, uh, design the InDesign, design to test template, and explore applying my brand in elements. Yep, so that's like your first task. You started today, you might finish it on the weekend, whatever. So that's just an example. So as you go down, there's other tasks that you'll need to do. So think about the holidays. Start making a plan. You know you have to source. Oh, they are all white, sorry. If that happens to you, it's because somehow you have ended up with white text. So let's change the text box, but I'll, I'll change it. Um, so you've got to source mock-ups. Um, yeah, so where are you going to source them? You know, you know start looking at mock-up tree, um, etc. There's lots of sites out there. List, list them as your actions. You've got to go and look. Um, and you're looking for high res 300 ppi at the size I need them. So that's again we're having the InDesign document um, already there and you can actually start figuring out well how, how um, big do I actually need this image to be physically because an image can be 300 pixels per inch, but be tiny, and you don't realise on screen it looks the same. So just be careful when you're downloading them. There's no problem, as you know, reducing the amount of pixels, but there's a big problem if you've sourced an image and then you put it into InDesign and then you start blowing up and you wonder why it's all furry. Again, so that's going to have to be in the holidays. And then the next task would also be to collect all my work, right? When am I doing that? Probably in the holidays. Put a date to it. Um, you might want to also um, subscribe, you know, um, you know, most of you right now you need to ring, if you're doing Memento Pro, for pricing and guidance. Are in the cover, etc., because I know they don't do a printed image on the cover. Um, so you want to talk to them, and because you've got to figure out your pricing, you need to put your pricing in this document anyway. So if it's blurred, you can get the pricing off the blurred website. That's pretty easy. You'll get a rough pricing. So when are you going to do that? You really should do that. You know, this week, next week, so you know what you're up for, and you don't put more pages in than you can afford. 
right? You also want to ask about their deadline. And print deadline. Now I know, I already know, it's going to be at least two weeks before the date that you want it. Right? So get it in time for the exhibition. So we'll go back two weeks. But check with them what's their absolute deadline and if worse comes to worse and you've been late, um, what's the deadline if you're not having it posted and you want to just go and pick it up? Yeah? So what's the last pick up date? Yeah? Physically. So some students have ended up doing that and it's down at, I think it's out at um, Waterloo or something like that. I don't know. Can't remember. Anyway, it's a bit of a trek but, you know, people have done it and it's in Sydney so that's sort of an advantage over blurred books where you just, but again, blurred books you need at least two weeks turnaround. If you miss that deadline, it's not going to get here. If you're doing a lay flat one, it's going to cost you more and you also want to um, allow a little bit more time as well for that. So this is why this planning is so important, you know? So um, yeah, you want to know what's the actual print deadline, what's the last date. If you say you need it for the exhibition night, that's your absolute cut off, and then go back two weeks, but check with them. Okay, that's what we were told last year might have changed, I don't know. And you know why it might have changed? Because they might have a lot of high volume, different times of year. You might be lucky because it's mid-year, but when it's end of the year and the UTS students are getting all theirs done as well, you might find that they want three weeks. You know, I don't know. Ask. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, I think that's it, but there's also the website. Um, do you need to look up um, pricing? Um, Wix is free. And you can upgrade afterwards to remember, remove the at Wix one. So if you want to build a little Wix, that's not such a problem. However, if you want to use it for Squarespace or um, WordPress, you'll need to go and check out the pricing. All right, pricing and all that stuff. So hosting, so you might have a hosting fee for other ones. Uh, with Wix, the hosting is done through their Wix thing, which, you know, Sometimes that's not ideal, but you know, that's, that's the free deal. You, you don't get a choice, it just gets hosted by their, their host, right? So you just want to decide how you want to do it. Hosting is much more of a question if you're going to use WordPress and some costs. So these are your kind of things you want to look at. Um, so go and make sure you've got your pricing sorted out. So there's going to be other tasks, aren't there? Along the way, you're going to have other tasks like um, allowing time for fixing work, fixing projects. Yeah, so after consultation with me and other teachers looking at the work and trying to decide what goes in, um, you might find you get told to go back, um, say it's the SIA layout, you submit it to Howard or whoever, and then they come, you know, then you've shown it to me, and I go, well, hang on, you know, there's some very loose paragraph space in here, can we go back to the original file and fix that? Otherwise, it's not really suitable to put in your portfolio, because it's actually not your best example of publication design. If you're not going to fix that one, then okay, let's just look at the ones you're doing for the EPUB. Because although they're an electronic publication, it's an InDesign document, it'll translate really nicely as a print document, you can also publish it online and have a link. So fixing projects, um, uh, links to projects, thinking about which ones you might, might want to have a link to, um, question mark. So some, some people like to have a QR code, even in the print one, for some of the projects. So you might even investigate that and think about whether that's something you want to include in the print one. So there's a few tasks, there's going to be more, it's a table so we can just add to it. Uh, but this is, this is what, you, what we mean by a plan and a timeline for tasks to be completed by. So start and end dates for each task to keep you on the track. Um, and then you have to prepare the budget. So costs, so now you've identified some of these things, we know there's costings for the print portfolio. So that's what I'm saying, you've got to ring Memento or go to the Blurb website and work costs. 
Okay? Um, then you've got website costs, but you also have, ooh, that's the website, right? You also have um, business card printing. So you're, you are asked to design a business card. You need to find out and get, it, get your business cards printed. They're pretty cheap to print, guys. You can, it's really it's amazing how cheap you can get them done. Just do a very small run, very small, small as you can get. And um, front and back, yes, yeah, so double sided. Colour, etc. Get some printing quotes. And again, think about, um, you know, that would be up, up here maybe. Uh, that would be, say, maybe another thing to do in, in the holiday is, is get quotes. So just add a row below, you know, quotes for business cards. Okay, so business cards. Yep, so somewhere along the line you're going to have to get some quotes for that because you need to have them printed for the night. So hopefully your industry people can run for the card and come back to you as people have with some of these guys and ask you to do some work. You will also have a presence on the Tape Design website, so that's another place we do direct anyone that makes inquiries with us. We do direct them there so they can get in contact with you directly. So once you've left here, we're not involved, but you've still got your stuff and your contact details if you want them on the, in the Tape Design website. Okay, um, so then you've got here today's work. Put the layout sketches in, do it now, and you don't have to go back. Some more work you don't have to do later. And then right now, you're all working on the sample print portfolio layouts. That's what you're doing in your design right now. Just do screenshots. Pop them in. Whatever you've done today, it's great. Put it in. All right, so that's where we're up to. Then we'll be doing the same as we start to get you to work on your Wix website. You'll come back and put screenshots of, again, three different design ideas in there. Um, this one, I think, you know, this, you could decide to do this in the holidays, but it may be something you want to do sooner, just so that as you're designing the portfolio, you have a more realistic idea who you're putting it in front of. So areas of interest and companies you would like to work for. Will the portfolio items be aimed at a specific industry area? You might answer no, and you want a more generic portfolio. You don't know who you're going to put in front of. That's okay. Um, but just start to think about what, what kind of companies. And what are your, try to identify your strongest design and employment skills. You've done a resume. Hopefully on that you try to identify some of your strengths. Uh, some of you are really good at, you know, visual identity. You love doing logos, you love the whole branding. Okay, put that forward. Some of you are great at publications. Try to identify. Some of you are great at illustration. Some of you just want to do digital illustration. Identify what that is and that's a consideration for your portfolio design. So. If I say I want to do publications design, you know, I really want to apply to some publishing, digital publishing companies. Gosh, I really do have to change the colours on all of these. What's the consideration? Okay, maybe I need more publication. Maybe I want to look back then at my cert for brochure I did and fix it. Because I need more publication stuff than just my ebook. I need time for that, which is why we're doing this planning. So, more publications, question mark. Um, have I got, and in terms of applying for jobs that ask for UX or branding design, am I going to have enough, or do I need to use some extra mock-ups to show how one of my branding designs could be applied? Do I need more? If you don't know yet, but you're thinking UX could be an area you're interested in, in fairness, you haven't really done the project yet, so you may not have a good feeling of it. Or, you know, maybe web design is something you want to get into. Um, so then that has a consequence for what you put in the portfolio. So will I need, you know, my consideration, more mock-ups, showing work on websites. Yeah, 
maybe you want to go and build a couple more websites and have links to them and again have a QR code in the print version. I don't know, it's up to you. Would company check the, um, if we make lots of mock-ups in our portfolio, won't they check um, these are legit or not? Sorry? Um, for example, I, I want to bring in my portfolio that I work on for a UX design, but there is lots of mock-ups. So well, make sure you label them as UX concepts. UX concepts. Yeah? But with the one that you're actually making, there'll be a Figma file and you can have a link to it. Okay. on your portfolio. So if you want to see one you've got okay. one to show. Okay. But you, you've got to be honest, you haven't worked as a UX designer. No. But if you want to get into it, obviously you've got to show, oh look, I've been thinking about it. You know, I understand the concepts and I understand how to build a mock-up and I understand how to do some of the research. You know, you'll be doing the whole process. So the project we're doing is UX UI. So we're doing the UX process and then we're building it UI. In yep. user interface, and not just doing user interface but for the UX process. Whereas in industry, you can be employed as a UX designer where you do the, look at the whole, it's much more conceptual, much more research based, You're not necessarily the same person who does the user interface design. Yep. But as a graphic designer, you're more likely to get into it by just doing the interface. Yep. Yep? So you don't lie and say you're doing UX designer, no. Okay. Guys, last thing before I let you fall asleep. Um, the last thing on here says production schedule and feedback changes record. So as we start to produce it, um, this will be today's date we started. What feedback, what changes? So every week next, next term when you come in, you'll be showing me the portfolio, you'll put that day's date, you'll put what, what you looked at and then what feedback did you get and then what changes and improvements. So you might um, come in and you might have done, you know, um, uh, type, typography <coughs> hierarchy. Yeah, so you're, you're working out your headings or something on that day. Um, you get some feedback that the font is wrong, font is too bold, um, changes improvement, I, I changed it it to a softer font, what you love, whatever, softer font, some, something, you know, whatever you did. Font, can't spell. Um, yeah, changed it. I cannot touch type to a softer font. So, you know, whatever date that was. So, that's, that's what you're going to be doing. So, as you come in. So, just don't neglect this document, guys. Particularly what you did today. Put it in straight away. Put it in your reports and research straight away. Then it's not going to be a nightmare when you're in the middle of the actual production. You're not going to be stressing about this document. It's already mostly filled in. And after the whole thing is presented to industry, you'll come back in here, deliver the presentation, right? So you're delivering it on the night to the industry people and getting feedback and then recording that feedback. Feedback on the final print portfolio portfolio website. So you get feedback from the people on the night and you just try and remember it. The next day we'll still have one more, um, do we have one more class? I can't remember. Anyway, by the end of that week, because uh, it will be an opening on the Tuesday night, you just need to come back and fill this in before the end of that. And then based on the received feedback, what are the refinements um, and when you're going to do them, and then a little bit more about trying to find future opportunities to present your creative work. And by then, you might actually be starting to um, line up some interviews with people. Okay, the rest of it's for me because I'll be observing you on the night, interacting with.